current job is as a venture capitalist with innovation endeavors. I'm not programming on a day-to-day -day basis, but you know the, the, the kind of take home that you know I can take away from CS or math or philosophy um, in, in working on my day-to-day -day job is first structuring the problem and first trying to develop a framework and then working on solving it. Um, especially as a venture capitalist, you see companies in enterprise search, you see companies in synthetic genomics, you see companies in health IT. Um, and those are all very different fields and, and it's very easy to be, be scared and you know not even know where to like how to how to initially get traction in solving problems. And as a computer scientist, you learn it's it's not necessarily the problem you're solving, but how you abstract and modularize your solutions um, and, and applying that thinking and analysis. Uh, in my day-to-day -day job has been great. What am I passionate about? A lot. In, in the realm of tech, um, applications of tech that could change the world for the better. Personally, for me, uh, that means finding applications that are uh, mathematically complex, but also can be applied towards um, bringing justice, in some sense, to the world. I think there's two main things that attract people towards computer science. Certainly now we live in a day where we see technology startups left, right, and center. Um, and it's really you know, become part of you know, na national uh, vernacular and hegemony. I think a lot of people enter computer science to learn how to program. Um, and that's awesome. And we need people who can program efficiently and creatively. I think that there's somewhat of a forgotten side of computer science, which is you know kind of the math and algorithms and data science behind it, um, and that's more about you know asking questions like at its core, what are the semantic differences between two uh, computer science languages, or in abstract, what type of problems are even solvable? Um, you know what type of problems can be solved, but you know uh, not very efficiently. If you ever take an algorithms class or even just a programming class, you realize very quickly you know, there's an infinite number of ways to solve most problems. And it's really about solving the problem in a way that's you know, intellectually pretty and beautiful, but you know, if you're ever going to apply it in a way that's efficient and tractable. Um, and, and really, that is a creative process. I'm not sure if we understand what exactly triggers in the brain when you know, a mathematician discovers a proof or when a computer scientist you know, discovers a way to take something that was O of n squared to O of n. And, and similarly, we, we, haven't, we don't really know like, what triggers in the brain when you know, somebody makes the Mona Lisa or you know, the next David. Uh, there are these kind of aha moments, and I think that those aha moments are kind of you know, uh, the core of what we like to call creativity. I think that there's a very, very scary causal relationship between stereotypes and stereotype effect, or you know, like the instantiation of these stereotypes. On one hand, we have these stereotypes, and on the other hand, we see these data sets appearing. Where you know, like uh, I know a few years ago, at least, nine out of ten people in the CS department were guys, um, and that's a huge, huge problem. It's not huge in that you know less guys should be studying, but it's huge in that we're losing potentially eight girls. You know, if, if you. If you take a step back, and, and, and I, I think I come from a thesis where you know, like, innate interest in CS or programming or technology, and innate ability in CS and programming and technology, that's that's uniformly distributed across genders, across race, across you know, socioeconomic status. Um, and so, if, if you if if you believe that, um, then you you know you realize, wow, eight out of there's like eight females for every nine guys that didn't go into CS. You know, there's whole cultures, subcultures of people that don't think that it's appropriate for them. Um, and you realize what the kind of nine out of ten guys have been able to do over the past 40 years with programming and advances in, in computer science. Um, and you think, man, if we had you know, all those other populations also bringing their mental bandwidth to solving these problems, how much further could we be? You know, and what type of problems could we be solving? I think this problem is twofolded, uh, and one is really, you know, going out on the grassroots and, and you know, convincing these populations that have kind of traditionally not considered CS or programming or tech uh, viable fields for themselves, convincing them that it's that it's something that everybody can do and it's something that everybody should do. On the other hand, I think it's I think that you know, CS culture or programming culture or tech culture does need to be changed a little bit. And so I think that there's really, we need to find a balance between like, you know, bottom up and top down and solving these, these problems.